Hello and welcome back to Project 3A. I've installed new injectors and coil on plugs and both of those need wiring up. So today I'm making myself a sub wiring harness. So this is the old wire and harness. It looks really old, outdated and really untidy. You've got your four injector plugs here. At the back you've got the two coil plugs, but I'm missing two leads as I need two extra now for the coil on plugs and the water temperature sensor. And at the front, the two plugs to fit to the main wire and harness and an earth strap that goes to the alternator. And it used to sit something like this which isn't really pleasing to the eye anymore and because i've got to do so many changes to this sub harness my easiest option is just to make a new one from scratch so what i'm now going to do is cut this all open work out what wire is what and then go from there and hopefully make a new one so i'm going to start off by prising apart the main plastic bit that sits on top of the injectors and then taking a razor blade, just cutting the insulation off of the end to free the plastic completely off. Now, at the end with the plugs for the coils on it, there is conduit wrapped in the insulation tape. And if you feel along it, there will be a gap in it. So just feel where the gap is, grab yourself a blade and work slowly down, try not to nick any wires with the blade. At both ends it gets a little bit more difficult as it has plastic sheathing on and a lot of insulation tape on some bits. So when cutting this away, be really careful that you're only cutting the plastic and the tape rather than the wires. Now all the insulation is off, I can see what wires do what. But when I was cutting up, the plugs that attached to the main harness, there was couple of earth leads with a lot of insulation on and when you cut back the insulation there's some sticky material inside the only thing I can guess that is for is to stop interference with the radio but there's no radio where we're going so that won't be needed if you do actually know why this is here please let me know in the comments down below as I'm quite interested so I'm going to write down everything I've found what colour wire goes to what, make myself a little list and start from scratch. So a quick look at the injector wire and loom before I get stuck into things. The odd plug out is the water temperature sensor which the wire colours are purple, white, black and red and red and black. And injector one is white and blue, yellow and black. Injector two is purple and blue and white and blue. Injector three, white and blue and yellow and red. And injector four is white and blue and yellow and green. The white and blue wires are a common positive. So all the colored wires are a switched ground. And on the coil side of things, we've got a ring terminal here that goes straight to the alternator. And we've got a black, a black and white, a brown and a yellow on this one. The same on this one, but this wire is just brown. So the one with brown and yellow is for coils one and four, and just the brown is for two and three. Because I'm going sequential ignition, I am going to have to add two other cables for the two extra coils. Now, I did say I wasn't going to hack up this wiring harness, but I am going to take the water temperature sensor 
off this harness as I haven't got a new plug to replace this. Other than that, I am going to start off from scratch. So I've chucked a load of different coloured wires together to start off my harness for the injectors. And I've also got a few lengths of wire at the right length for the injectors themselves. These are actually the switched earth for the injectors. And this big red cable here is the permanent live. So now what I need to do is splice into the permanent live and run a live up to the injectors. So what I'm going to do here is put a pick right in the centre of the wires and open them up just a little bit. And then I'm going to poke my wire through, split it in half and wrap it round two separate ways. Now that wire is soldered into the main power line, I'm just going to put a little bit of heat shrink over it, heat that up and move on to the next one. a little bit like this. Before I go any further and terminate the ends of the wire, what I want to do is put the protective coating on these wires so they don't get too hot, brittle and break. So what I've got is some fiberglass heat proof matting, especially for wires. So I've also cut little holes out for these to slide in. The other way to do that is with the plastic split conduit that you would get in a standard engine bay. I'm also going to have to put the heat proof insulation over these bits of the wiring as well now because I won't be able to once the plugs are on. So now I'm ready to terminate the ends to put the plug on that is supplied with the injector dynamics injectors and in that packet you also get the waterproof rubber seal for the plug and the uninsulated connectors themselves. So we're going to start off with the waterproof connectors. I'm going to put those on before I even strip the end of the wires. Now to strip the ends of the wires. We don't want to strip them too much as we still need some insulation for the connectors to grip onto. So the end bit with the longer tabs, that grips onto the insulator. Whereas this bit needs to grip onto bare metal. So we're gonna do it about three mil from the end. So I'm going to grab my connector, sit it in the wire just like that so the first tab is on the insulation. Now the connectors and the waterproof seals are on, I can put on the connector body. On the back of these there is a number one and a number two. Number two on this is the constant positive 
and number one is the signal or switched ground. These are really simple to use. There's a little bit of red plastic in the center, which you just pry up away from the body and slide the connectors in. until they bottom out and then push the red plastic in and they are locked in place and then slide the waterproof seal up and just using a small flat screwdriver just slowly start prying the waterproof seal into the connector body itself. Now I'm just going to finish it off by wrapping the two parts of heat insulation together with a bit of tape and just the insulation to the plug up this end, making sure not to cover the tab that allows me to release the plug. So that is the injector part of the loom almost done. You may be wondering what the extra wires are for. Well, the red and the blue are gonna go to a plug which I'm gonna do in a second, but I'll tell you what that's gonna do soon enough. And the two blacks are the main grounds. They are gonna go one to the alternator and one to the block or head. So I'm gonna start with my red and blue wire. I'm going to grab another bit of heat insulation and slide that down over it. This connector has a white plastic bit in the middle that needs to be pulled out before the connectors can go in it. And on the back there is a two and a one. So I'm gonna keep the constant positive into number two. It doesn't really matter for this plug which way round they actually go. and then push down the white plastic tab. And now the earth for the alternator. Strip the ends. Pop the heat proof insulation on. And I've got a non-insulated crimp terminal to go on the alternator. Make sure that's right down in there. Give the end a good squeeze down. And for this one, I'm just gonna put a little bit of heat shrink on the end. So now it's time to do the coil side of things. I've got my patch lead here, and there's four wires in these connectors, and they are labeled up one, two, three, four. I've done a little bit of research, and I think I'm doing this right, but apparently number one, which for some reason is black on these patch leads, is our permanent live. Number two, brown, should be ground to your head, Number three, the yellow one, is the trigger signal. And number four is also a ground to go straight to the head. 
So I'm going to start off by putting a little bit of the heat insulation over these wires. So the wire that I'm going to start with is the yellow trigger wire, as these are individual to each coil. And I want to do them at this stage before I forget which lead is what. So I've got my four different colored wires. I'm going to use green as coil one, yellow coil two, brown coil three, and white coil four. So the next couple of steps I done off of camera as it was a little bit fiddly, a little bit repetitive and very boring. But each coil has two ground wires on it. I've combined them two, joined it into one wire, joined all four of those into one wire to an eye that is gonna go onto the back of the head. The same with the shared positive. I've combined the two into one, into one wire. I've also made another ground with an eyelet that will go on the back of the head. All I've got to do now is add in the water temperature sensor. Now all I need to do is tape it all up and make it look neat. Now it's finally time to put a plug on this. I'm going to change it to a 16 pin connector. I'm going to combine the injector harness and the coil harness all together, all in one, to make it a little bit more neater in the engine bay. I'm not going to bore you too much with this, as it's the same as the other plugs I've put on, so let's get to it. Now all that's left to do is to plug it onto the engine. Now I'm going to use this lug here at the back of the engine on the head to ground this wire and loom. This used to be a bolt that held in the original coil pack. As you can see, it's nice and clean and a really good earth point for the head. Now, as you may have noticed, I have changed the routing of this harness. It used to connect at the front here with two connector blocks, but I thought that was unsightly and now there's gonna be a big gap here. So I chose to reroute it a different way and plug it in at the back here. This does mean I have got to change the wiring harness on the car, but that's not a problem. I'd rather have a little bit extra work and a much cleaner engine bay. I'm gonna have to add the extra wires into the car's wiring harness anyway, so I'm gonna be chopping it up and I'll do that at the same time. That's all for this episode. This was my first time making an engine wiring harness so feel free to leave a comment down below if I've got anything wrong or if I could do anything better. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Uh -oh.